Ten years I devoted to the duty you charged me. Ten years I looked after those who died at sea. And finally, when we could be together again, you weren't there. Why weren't you there? Is my nature. Davy Jones is a figure deeply entrenched in maritime folklore, known as the supernatural governor of the Seven Seas. He achieved infamy as the accursed captain of the Flying Dutchman, a spectral ship condemned to sail the oceans for eternity. For a time, he reigned as one of the most formidable and merciless pirate captains, striking fear into even the bravest sailors. Davy Jones has become the subject of numerous myths and legends among pirates, especially in connection with the Flying Dutchman and Davy Jones' locker. In one particularly captivating legend, Davy Jones was originally a celebrated mariner until he fell in love with Calypso, the goddess of the sea. In a pact with her, he was entrusted with the helm of the Flying Dutchman, tasked with the sacred duty of ferrying the souls of those who perished at sea to the afterlife. Compelled by his love for Calypso, Davy Jones agreed to a unique arrangement. He would be permitted to set foot on land once every ten years, granting him precious moments with his beloved. However, when the time came for his decadal respite, Calypso was nowhere to be found. Heartbroken, Davy Jones embarked on a different path. As the first court of brethren convened, Davy Jones conspired with fellow pirate lords to wrest control of the seas away from Calypso. They imprisoned her in the form of a mortal woman, a decision for which Davy Jones bore the burden of guilt. He never ceased to love her, but the anguish she caused him became unbearable. Consequently, in an act of profound symbolism, Davy Jones removed his own heart and encased it within the dead man's chest, sealing away his emotions and love for Calypso forever. This chest became a feared artifact, symbolizing both his pain and his fearsome power as the captain of the Flying Dutchman. Abandoning his sacred duties, Davy Jones returned to the Seven Seas, but now he struck terror into the hearts of sailors from all corners of the world. He had transformed into a figure of ferocity and cruelty, developing an unsatiable appetite for all brutal things. Davy Jones took advantage of shipwrecked sailors lost at sea, sailing aboard the Flying Dutchman, which had become a cursed ghost ship. Those who sought to avoid death and eternal judgment agreed to serve Jones aboard his haunted vessel. In time, they would become part of the ship itself, eternally enslaved by their terrifying captain. Davy Jones also held control over the Kraken, a monstrous sea creature resembling a giant squid. This beast ensured that the captain of the Flying Dutchman continued to gather lost souls to join his damned crew aboard the cursed ship. At a certain point, Davy Jones struck a pact with Jack Sparrow to resurrect his beloved ship, the Wicked Wench, which he later renamed as the Black Pearl. In exchange, Jones demanded 100 years of servitude aboard the Flying Dutchman. This debt would eventually come due 13 years later, when Jones sent bootstrap Bill Turner to deliver Jack the Black Spot, a symbol of his doom, luring the Kraken to him. Several days later, through a complex deal involving Will Turner, bootstrap Bill's son, the debt was finally settled. Jack and the Black Pearl were dragged into the depths by the Kraken. However, Jones' control over his destiny was ultimately compromised when Lord Cutler Beckett of the East India Trading Company took possession of Davy Jones' still beating heart. This twist of fate forced Jones and his crew to carry out Beckett's will. With the Flying Dutchman under Beckett's command, Davy Jones led the East India Trading Company armada in a fierce battle against the Fourth Court of Pirate Brethren. While the Brethren convened, Jones encountered Calypso who initially intended to be free and seek retribution against the Brethren, until realizing Jones's betrayal. Upon her release, the enraged goddess Calypso unleashed a massive maelstrom, where a battle erupted at its center. It was in this very battle that Davy Jones's heart was stabbed, and he died, finally liberated. With his death, Davy Jones was once again embraced by the dark depths of the sea he had long been in love with, if only for a brief period. However, approximately two decades after the battle against Calypso, Jones mysteriously reappeared, still under the curse of the Flying Dutchman. One stormy night, he walked on land and entered the home of Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan, who had been reunited when the destruction of Poseidon's trident broke Will's curse. Jones slowly entered the Turner's room, raising his crab-like claw to strike them. 
A lightning bolt awakened Will, who only saw the empty room and immediately went back to sleep, oblivious to the barnacles and seawater on the floor. Davy Jones was infamous for his sadistic ways, caring no more for his own crew than his enemies. Proud, cruel, and hateful, Jones was a malevolent creature. Perhaps a nihilist as a result of Calypso's betrayal, the only thing he seemed to enjoy was ensuring that the lives of those around him were as miserable and joyless as his own. He routinely mistreated his own crew, believing that all humans should endure great suffering in the afterlife, a sentiment he expressed with his statement, life is cruel. Why should the afterlife be any different? Jones was not credulous, and therefore, when someone had a debt with him or undertook a mission for him, he would often mark them with a magical sign or hold a good faith payment, allowing Jones to ensure that the person would do as he asked. However, he had some confidence in at least a few of his crew members, as evidenced by the fact that he occasionally allowed them to go ashore when necessary, and he even had four more trusted companions aboard the Flying Dutchman. Although Jones demanded a good faith payment from others, he was treacherous and unreliable, feeling no obligation to return any kindness. However, when it came to matters of love, Jones was somewhat understanding, revealing a softer side hidden beneath years of guilt, anger, and bitterness. Even after she betrayed him, Jones still loved Calypso, and her name was the last word he uttered before his death. Although he was furious about her betrayal, he also said that his heart would always belong to her. Despite declaring that love was a horrible bond, Jones seemed to shed a tear when Jack Sparrow told him that Will Turner was in love and needed to get married. However, upon discovering this love, Jones did not hesitate to stab Will in the heart in front of Elizabeth Swan, who had just married Will, despite understanding his feelings since he had felt them himself. Jones' physical gestures were distinctive. He had a strong Scottish accent accentuated by several vocal and facial tics, and a sleazy mocking laugh. He often prolonged the sounds of vowels and was known to release water from his mouth when desperate or angry. Like the rest of his crew, Davy Jones, over the time he spent aboard the Flying Dutchman, adopted the appearance of various species of aquatic flora and fauna, to the point where he seemed to have lost all his humanity. Before losing his humanity, his appearance was not very different from many other sailors, although his way of dressing was very formal, or so it was before the curse began. He wore black boots, a pirate red coat with golden trim, and an orange vest. His face was rough, and he had a beard adorned with several braids. In his new form, Jones' head was replaced by something resembling an octopus, with a beard of 46 tentacles hanging from his speckled and green-skinned face. He often used these tentacles instead of his upper limbs, such as to hold the key to the dead man's chest or to play his pipe organ. During his duel with Jack Sparrow, he lost one of his two larger tentacles. A prominent sack also protruded from the back of Jones' head, located beneath a barnacle-covered hat. This sack was, in fact, the back of an octopus. A siphon was located on the left side of his face, compensating for his lack of a human nose. This lack of a human nose also gave his voice a slightly nasal sound. He had a crustacean claw on his left arm and a long tentacle-shaped index finger on his right hand. His right leg resembled that of a crab, which, in turn, looked like a peg leg, giving Jones a slightly odd gait, so he occasionally used a wooden stick inlaid with barnacles as a crutch. His blood was black instead of red, and his skin had a light greenish tone. Barnacles did not grow on his skin, unlike on his claw or crab leg. Next to Bootstrap Bill, Jones appeared to be the most human of the entire crew of the Flying Dutchman. His attire consisted of a coat that originally was light blue with thin golden trim on the cuffs and around the buttonholes, but these had faded away, a light gray single-breasted vest, and dark gray trousers. As his clothing was almost always wet, it appeared much darker than it actually was and seemed to have a dark gray or dark greenish tone. Like the crab leg and claw, his clothing was covered in barnacles. On his left leg, which still looked human, he wore a leather boot. A dark red sash and a leather belt with a buckle completed this outfit. However, the most noticeable piece of fabric he wore was his hat, which was a tricorn that matched the same light blue color as his coat and had gold embroidery. As the captain of the Flying Dutchman and Ferryman of the Underworld, Jones was granted the ability to transition between the worlds of the living and the dead. 
This power potentially contributed to his other supernatural traits, including the abilities to teleport and pass through solid objects. Jones was also able to resurrect the Wicked Wench, raising it from the depths, after it was set aflame by the East India Trading Company. However, his position came with downsides. He could only set foot on land once every ten years, and abandoning his duty as the ferryman of the afterlife not only cursed him but his entire crew, morphing them into fishmen. Despite the curse, Jones found loopholes, such as standing on a sandbank with his feet in a bucket of water, hinting at ways to circumvent his predicament. Jones had the power to control and summon the Kraken, a sea monster capable of destroying ships at his command and hunting individuals marked with the black spot across the seas. While any member of his crew could mark an individual with the black spot, only Jones could remove it. His role enhanced some of his physical abilities, showcasing superhuman strength, particularly evident in his final battle where he was seen effortlessly lifting both Jack Sparrow and the dead man's chest. After removing his own heart, Jones became virtually immortal, his life tied to the heart safely stored in the dead man's chest. To kill him, one would have to destroy the heart, and the perpetrator would then have to take his place as the captain of the Flying Dutchman. Although immortal, Jones could still experience pain, as seen when Jack Sparrow cut off some of his facial tentacles, causing them to remain animated and act independently. Despite his high pain tolerance, allowing him to quickly recover and continue fighting, even with a sword lodged in his body, he wasn't impervious to agony. Once a figure of formidable might, Davy's cruelty turned into a vulnerability following the incidents at Isla Cruces, where his heart was stolen. Anyone in possession of it could control him through coercion. He also demonstrated a kind of clairvoyance. Despite not seeing Jack for 13 years, he knew how Jack consistently introduced himself as Captain Jack Sparrow. Moreover, he could pinpoint the exact location of the Black Pearl even with all lights extinguished and out of visual range and seemed aware of Jack's presence on board. In another instance, he knew of a challenge made by Will, even when he was in a different part of the ship, and sensed Will's presence when he sneaked back onto the Flying Dutchman, showcasing an uncanny awareness of his surroundings. Davy Jones was known as a master swordsman, and few could match him. He had an aggressive and offensive fighting style. His strikes were often fast, powerful, and highly varied. It was very difficult to defend against his attacks, which typically required the full attention and concentration of an opponent with average skills. His own defense was almost as sharp as his offense, and some opponents resorted to unorthodox methods to defeat him. His crab claw also served as a weapon with which he could easily snap a person's neck or even break a sword. Davy Jones managed to defeat some of the most known duelists, including Jack Sparrow and even the talented William Turner, being responsible for the latter's temporary death. However, it should be noted that these victories were more due to his invulnerability and unique anatomy than his swordsmanship, as Sparrow managed to beat Jones in a sword fight and disarm him, but was disarmed when Jones broke his sword with his crab claw. Turner was only defeated because Jones was unaffected by a wound that would have killed any mortal man. He was known to utilize his unique physical attributes, such as his crab leg, numerous facial tentacles, and crab claw, and duels. In addition to his swordsmanship skills, he was also a master mariner and a skilled cannon operator. Due to these skills, he was not only a deadly duelist, but also a captain who could win a naval battle against almost any enemy ship or even a fleet of ships. When he had no intention of attacking a ship with the Flying Dutchman, he had the option to send the Kraken to attack it. Jones' only weapon was a sword he usually carried tied to his belt. Before using the small sword of the then-deceased James Norrington, Jones wielded an old sword encrusted with barnacles, which appeared to be an unusually designed Scottish claymore. Besides his weapon, Jones carried several objects with him, the key to the dead man's chest, a silver musical locket, and his smoking pipe, which he filled with a substance that burns underwater, allowing him to smoke even when the Dutchman was submerged. Jones kept a pipe organ on board the Flying Dutchman and apparently played it daily. Using the tentacles that formed his beard, Jones would play his organ in a way that could only be matched by three or more ordinary human organists. The piece he often played was the same as the one played by his medallion. In times of intense emotional distress, Jones would use his organ to vent his anger and suffering. It was through his organ that he would show his more sensitive and troubled side. 
The tale of Davy Jones is one steeped in tragedy, a potent mixture of love and betrayal swirling in the stormy seas of myth and legend. A figure embodying both romance and fear, Jones commands both the Flying Dutchman and the imaginations of those who hear his tale. From a heart-wrenching love story with the sea goddess Calypso to fierce battles with iconic figures like Jack Sparrow and Will Turner, Jones' story is a turbulent voyage through the highs and lows of the human condition. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. We love hearing from our viewers, so please leave a comment and share your ideas for future videos. Thanks for your support, and we can't wait to see you again in our next video.